Okay, so for this question, what we've got to do is integrate from naught to pi upon two theta f of theta with respect to theta. And in the previous part, we were told that f of theta equal to half plus seven over two cos two theta. So first of all, what I'm going to want to do is obviously substitute this in for f of theta. So if we do that, we're going to get that this is equal to the integral from naught to pi upon two of theta times f of theta. Now, what I'm going to do is multiply the theta with these two terms. So what we're going to get is theta over two, when we do theta times the half, and then plus seven theta over two multiplied by cos two theta. And all of this, as put in brackets, is integrated with respect to theta. Now, I can start to integrate this, okay? The first term we can integrate very easily because all we've got to do is just add one to the power and divide by it. So we're going to end up with theta squared over four. That'd be two with another two. Two twos, four there. But when it comes to integrating seven theta over two times cos two theta, what we've got is a product of two functions. And to do something like this requires integration by parts. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with integration by parts. Just as a quick reminder, this is the formula that I'm going to be using. And you normally find this in most formula books. So we have two parts. One part is u and the other part is dv dx. So we're not obviously dealing with x here, but theta. So we can basically say that, okay, We'll take this part as the u part, so I'll just put that up there, that's u, and this part here would be normally dv dx, but it's got to be essentially dv by d theta for this example. So when you're doing integration by parts, we'll run through this, okay? What you do is you take one part, this part here, the u part, times it by the integral of the other part. That's the start anyway. So what we're going to do is say that this is plus, and I'm going to take this part, seven theta over two, that's the u part, multiply it by the integral of the other part. And the integral of cos two theta is, in, is a half sine two theta. So put that in as a half sine two theta. And then we have minus the integral, minus the integral of v. V was the part that we just got as an answer when we integrated, and this is this part. So I'm just gonna write that back in as a half sine two theta. And we multiply this by the differential of the first part, the u part. And if we differentiate seven theta over two, what we end up with is just simply seven over two. So pop that in there. And we integrate this with respect to theta. And all of this is within the limits naught to pi upon two. So just pop that in square brackets there from naught to pi upon two. Okay, so we'll just clean this up a little. For the first term, let's just leave that as theta squared over four for the moment. For this term here, we can do seven theta sine two theta all over two twos, which are four. So we've got seven theta over four multiplied by sine of two theta. Now, when it comes to this integral, I'm just gonna clean this up first of all, rather than integrate it. So we've got seven over two times a half, so that's seven quarters, and being a constant, I'm gonna put it out the front of the integral. You don't have to do that, but it does make it a lot easier. So that just leaves me with the integral of sine two theta with respect to theta. And again, we need our limits in, so put some square brackets there, going from naught to pi upon two. 
Okay, so we just need to copy this out again. So we've got theta squared over 4 plus 7 theta over 4 times sine 2 theta. And then when it comes to integrating sine 2 theta with respect to theta, so that's going to become minus a half cos 2 theta. So when you put it with this minus, that makes a plus, and you've got 7 quarters times a half, which is 7 eighths, and then you've got cos 2 theta. So we put that again in our square brackets with the limits going from 0 to pi upon 2. So we just need to substitute our values in, starting with pi upon 2. So here we've got a quarter multiplied by pi upon 2 all squared. So let's just put that in, pi upon 2 all squared. And then when we put pi upon 2 into here, I always think of pi upon 2 radians then as 90 degrees, so I'm looking at the sign of 180 degrees or pi radians. And that is 0. So this term's going to be 0. So we'll just put plus 0. And then when we get to this term here, we've got the cos of 2 theta, the cos of 2 pi upon 2, which is the cosine of pi, or the cosine of 180 degrees, which is minus 1. So you're going to get minus 7 eighths there. Let's just put this in square brackets for the first part. And then we've got to subtract what we get when we put the 0 through. Well, this term here will be 0. This term will be 0 when theta is 0. And here we've got the cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so we just end up with plus 7 eighths. Now when we clean this up, we've got quarter then times pi squared over 4, which is going to give us pi squared over 16. And then here we've got minus 7 eighths minus another 7 eighths, which is minus 14 eighths. Now I could put this all over 16, pull out 1 16th if you like, and then I've just got pi squared minus 28. And there you go. The integral then of theta, f of theta, with respect to theta. If you're unsure on the integration by parts idea though, you can always go back on to my website. There's tutorials on this, okay? where I'll just give you a few examples, show you how to do it. Okay, so uh, that brings us now to the end of this question.